And again, I go back to that movie 300, and it's still fresh. You buy it on DVD for 22 bucks for it's been efficient. Um, but when you watch it, you see these guys pursuing something so deep, so huge. And they dedicate their lives to something so earthly. And yet we have the opportunity to dedicate our lives to something so violent, so heavenly, so real, so in front of us. I mean, the rocks and the trees and the bird cry out that he created this place. You look outside. I was sitting down by the lake a little bit earlier. I was just, you know, kind of watching you guys swimming a little bit. So I guess we're down to the back. But we're just looking at the lake and at the sky and the clouds. I mean, you kind of realize God created this thing in this way. So that's a pursuit. The first thing about says, therefore, each of you must put on. Now, this is not going to shoot. And if you feel like you, if you want to, it's, you must. <laughs> You must put on falsehoods, verse 25, and speak truthfully to his neighbor. For these are what we should do over the living way. For we are all members of one body, going back to what he said before. In your anger, do not sin. So it doesn't say in anger is sin, it says in your anger, do not sin. Um, do not let the sun go down while you're still angry, and do not give the devil a foothold. He who has been stealing must steal no longer, but must work. Doing something useful with his own hands that he may have something to share with those in need. Do not let any whole animals and talk them out of your mouth, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may be benefit those who listen. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God with whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, and anger, brawling and slander, along with every form of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another. Forgive each other, just as Christ God forgave you. These are some tough tests. Now, if you look at your Bible, it gives you chapter 5. Chapter 5 technically shouldn't be here because it's in John's To be imitators of God, therefore, as dearly loved children, and live a life of love. Again, love. That's what it's about. Just as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. But among you, there must not even be a hint of sexual morality or any kind of impurity or greed because these are improper for God's holy people. Nor should there be an obscenity, foolish talk, or coarse joking, which are out of place, but rather thanksgiving. For of this you cannot to be sure. No immoral, impure, or greedy person, such a man is an idolater, as any inheritance of the kingdom of Christ and of God. Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of such things, God's wrath comes on those who are disobedient. Therefore, do not be partners with them. For you were, were, were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. And here's the verse, the key verse we have here. How do we all read this Live as children of light, for the fruit of light consists of all goodness, righteousness, and truth. And find out what pleases the Lord. Have nothing to do with the frequent schemes of darkness, but rather expose them. Think about that. Light, darkness, exposure. Very, very difficult. For it is shameful even to mention what the disobedient do in secret, but everything exposed by the light becomes visible. For it is light that makes everything visible. This is why it is said, Wake up, O sleeper, and rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. Be very careful then. This is the challenge he gives us. How you live. Be careful how you live. Not just today, not just tomorrow, but until the rest of your life. Not as unwise, but as wise. Again, it's not desires, but lust. The logic, mind, understanding, and wisdom of that as well. And of course, the working of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish to understand what the Lord's will is. Do not get drunk on wine, which hopefully isn't a problem here because not for you or most of you are crazy, uh, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit. Speak to one another the psalms, sins, and spiritual songs. That's a great job of that today. Sing and make music in your hearts to the Lord. Always give you thanks to God, which we did this morning, even though we didn't have much so you guys did a good job there. For everything, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submit to one another. Out of reverence for God. Long passage, yes, but this gives us sort of 
a checklist of what should you should do and what should not do. That's why I kind of work down here. But think of it this way. If we are light, and if our lives is a reflection of Christ, then in a sense we're like mirrors. I mean, this is not to say that this is exactly what we are, but in a sense we are mirrors. And so whatever light from Christ shines down on us, our light reflects to wherever we're at, we're in communities, in our families, with our friends, whoever it is. The thing is, in order, us, in order for us to be bright and shining light, and light that is effective light, there's a lot of things we have to do to clean off all the gunk that's on them. Or what we could call the darkness of things that haven't been exposed to light. Now each one of us, there's no doubt, we all have something in our lives that is still there that should be taken away. Every one of us. Pastors included. I'm not excluded from everything. The only difference for me is I do this whole time. I'm still a person. I still believe. I still sin. But there's things in my life we need to identify. I talked about this morning how we need to remove idols in our lives. To ask God to forgive us and how to remove these things. As you saw in Gideon this morning, to remove the idols of his family was a scary thing because people might go against him. And we have to ask God to do that. But anyways, let's take a look at what our responsibility is to the light. Not only reflecting the light, but also the light. Negative things to put aside. And you were... Oh, there is. If you want to follow along, I have to sit down. Just so space for you to take some notes, which is always good to do, because, you know, I don't have to do sometimes you might fall asleep there. Try to raise your hand if you're falling asleep. And actually, you can't do that if you're falling asleep. And by the way, some of this thing just kind of messed up. Not really hard. Not really hard. Anyways, many of the things to put aside. I'm, I just, what I did was I made a list of things. Maybe you want to write this down for your reference for later on. Sometimes go back through this as a checklist of things that you, know, you might go back and say, hey, where's my life right now? Where is my life that we've got? Maybe a weekly thing, maybe a monthly thing. Uh, six months in the year, maybe a yearly thing. I mean, right before you come to camp, you know, okay, where's my life? What am I doing? And it's easier to have sort of a checklist because, you know, we go through our life where, you know, pastors would ask the congregation, okay, everybody bow your heads, pray, see where God, you know, see where your life is with God, your line and stuff. You know, how do you know if you're aligned or not if you don't have a checklist to go down? So what I have here is a checklist. And so negative things to put aside, and you see what number one says. Put off falsehood. Is there any falsehood in our lives? This is the thing that happens. Let me put the key for this. There's the other side of the sheet. You turned around. Right? So like, put off falsehood. Again, all this stuff is taken from this passage in um, Ephesians chapter 4 and chapter 5. Put off falsehood. Number one. Do not sin while you're angry. And it goes on and says, uh, you, should, you know, don't let, you know, anything, don't be angry when the sun goes down. Continue talking about that passage. Good stuff to live by. Those of you who are getting married, that's something definitely you want to stick by when you are getting married. Though I guess we can argue at night. Is it technically you can wait till next morning? Anyways, you can figure that out between you two. Uh, or read the Bible for us some more. Uh, no ceiling. Hopefully you guys aren't into this. By the way, I always caught ceiling one time when I was a kid. Um, yeah, it was funny. Actually, no, it wasn't funny. Ever since then, I stopped stealing. My dad caught me, actually. I, my, his bedroom, or well, my bedroom is his office. I was in the buffer to uh, his desk a few times here and there to play video games. Now, you guys know that's an addiction. When you steal something, to play something or do something, so don't do it. And he was standing right then and there at the door, just like this. And I turned around and I just put it back. <laughs> And I got on it, and I said, see, I just want to see him on it, maybe. You know, it's, it's a very scary thing. Don't think you can get away from it. Really, don't think you can get away from it. Anything and everything comes back around, actually. You know, people, I was talking to my parents about this before I flew out here. We were at the airport in San, you know, San Jose. And like I said, my dad's a pastor. And, you know, we were talking about, you know, they always say, people say, you know, oh yeah, people who do bad things move back, you know, like, you know, or God will punish you. And I was like, yeah. Or when, when something bad happens to you, it's, it's possibly a punishment. And we talk about how that's sometimes what we you know, what we say in our sort of conversation. You know, do that, you do this, or you know, if you don't eat your food, God's going to punish you, or whatever it is. 
Reality is, we talk about being special. God doesn't necessarily come up after us and just punish us for every single little wrong things that we do. Like a whole list of things we go through. A reality is, God's going to stand there at the end and say, this is the book of life, and He's going to stand before and judge us. But a lot of things that happen in our life is our own doing a lot of the time. God allows it to happen. 